So this is a huge marine diesel two-stroke propulsion engine. Let's check it out. Today, let's review the theory of the two-stroke diesel cycle used in this tanker marine vessel for its propulsion. Previously, we reviewed the four-stroke medium to high-speed engine used in our auxiliary generator engines. So today, we will see some of their differences. If you are curious on the four-stroke engine cycle, similar to what we have in cars, check out the other video in our channel. But first, let's talk about theory. Two-stroke engines means that when the piston inside the cylinder completes two strokes, which is the distance between top dead center and bottom dead center, the engine completes one combustion cycle, which in turn generates one revolution in the crankshaft. On the four-stroke engines, we need four strokes for one combustion cycle, and we produced two revolutions in the crankshaft. So if we get more revolutions per combustion cycle on the four-stroke, why do we need a two-stroke? Well, the biggest difference is power. We get more torque than in the four-stroke engine with the same size of engine. And at slower speeds, which is perfect when you're trying to move a huge idle ship from a port. So, lower RPMs and more power to move a lot of mass. Whereas smaller ships, cars, and even our diesel generator engine don't require so much power and use four stroke to use less fuel and therefore can take advantage of an extra revolution per combustion cycle. Now, let's review the moving parts and elements to simulate this two-stroke combustion cycle. First, as in the previous video, let's start with the turbocharger compressor side, which will suck in atmospheric air and compress it to create scavenge charge air. This compressed air will be stored in a scavenge air receiver so we can put more air inside a cylinder. This scavenge air receiver is so big that even we can go inside when we carry out inspections. Now let's look at the cylinder and what's inside it. Inside we have the piston and the piston is connected to a piston rod. The piston rod is connected to a crosshead, which connects to the connecting rod. And finally, the connecting rod is coupled to the crankshaft. Here we can see admission ports that allow the scavenge charge air, which is in the receiver, inside to the cylinder when the piston crown is below it. On the top of the cylinder, we have the cylinder head, which houses the following important elements. The exhaust valve, which will open to the exhaust manifold. The fuel injectors, which in this case we have two on the sides of the cylinder head. And finally, the fuel injection pump, which supplies the fuel to the fuel injectors. With all this clear, let's review one diesel combustion cycle, like we did on the four-stroke video, but this time with the two-stroke marine engine. Let's make our pressure volume diagram. Check out these lines. In this line, we have maximum pressure. This maximum pressure, as we can imagine, is when the combustion happens. 
In this line, we have the minimum pressure inside the cylinder, which at all times should at least be scavenge air pressure. We'll see more about that in a bit. Here, we have the maximum volume inside the cylinder. And this line is the minimum volume inside the cylinder. This area we'll call the combustion chamber. So let's begin our two-stroke cycle. On the first stroke, with the piston in bottom dead center and the scavenge port uncovered, allowing scavenge charge air inside the cylinder. So at this point, we have the minimum amount of pressure and the maximum amount of volume, the intersection of these two lines. As the piston goes up, the scavenge air port is sealed and due to the exhaust valve being closed, the air starts to compress, thus increasing the internal pressure and temperature. So in our combustion cycle, both admission and compression both happened in our first upward stroke. At this point, we have maximum compression pressure as you can see here. At top dead center, the fuel injection pump sends high pressure fuel to our fuel injectors, which atomize it inside our cylinder. You can see this process in our previous videos. Due to the high temperature of the compressed air, the fuel ignites at this point, we have the maximum pressure inside the cylinder. This exhaust gas expands inside, which pushes our piston down with a lot of force. Once the piston is down, the power is transferred from the piston rod to the crosshead, which is connected to the connecting rod, and finally rotates the crankshaft. As the scavenge air port is discovered due to the lowered piston, the exhaust valve is briefly opened to expel all exhaust gases being pushed by the scavenge charge air to our exhaust manifold, which in turn will power the turbine side of our turbocharger. In this second power stroke, we carried out both the combustion and exhaust stages of the combustion cycle, thus completing it in two strokes. Like previously mentioned, the power stroke on these huge marine engines give tremendous amounts of torque, enough to break the state of inertia and move this big ship that transport our goods all over the world. In daily life, many big trucks and buses also use the two strokes for the same reason. It's a lot of power in a small engine at the cost of speed and fuel efficiency. In any case, for us engineers, it's very important to understand this diagram or the expanded one to show the performance of the engine and any unusual issues that can happen. For example, low compression pressure could be due to a leaking exhaust valve, low charge air pressure, or even a broken piston ring. Or maybe you notice that combustion is happening too early compared to the other cylinders. Is it a timing problem? Or maybe a leaking fuel injector could cause premature combustion. As you can see, understanding the fundamentals is key for all aspiring engineers. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, 
seafarer.